सेव किया था ना मैं सिर्फ इसलिए गया था क्योंकि उसने मुझे कॉल किया दैट्स इट बट लिसन तो सेव इट फॉर समवन एल्स जिंदगी में सेव करना जरूरी है मगर जब बात पैसों की हो सिर्फ सेविंग से काम नहीं चलेगा इक्विटी म्यूचुअल फंड्स में इन्वेस्ट कीजिए और अपने सेविंग्स को आगे बढ़ने का मौका दीजिए म्यूचुअल फंड इन्वेस्टमेंट्स आर सब्जेक्ट टू मार्केट रिस्क रीड ऑल स्कीम रिलेटेड डॉक्यूमेंट्स केयरफुली can a democracy be at odds with a country or can a country be at odds with its democracy now that is what is reflected in the shorter version of the headline of this week's national interest it's democracy versus pakistan sounds complex isn't it that's the complexity that this week's national interest grapples with so stay with me before we get there however let me also do my once a month duty that's reminding all of you i know a lot of you have taken paid subscriptions to the print already but a lot a lot many of you haven't done so not because you don't want to do it because i know it's a little bit of an effort you have to go some place press something then do a couple more things it doesn't take more than a minute so please do it as i speak on my screen you will see how to do it so please do take a paid subscription to the print without that we cannot keep going and a lot of people good people have done it but i also know that there are a lot more lot more good people who haven't yet done it so please do it what we will give you in return is great journalism you have a stake in that so please pay for it on which note i come back to my complexity of the week are you with imran khan or against him we can ask this question in two different ways one if a fair election is held today will imran win or not and second if he wins will it be good for pakistan or a disaster for pakistan the answer to the first question is of course imran khan will win he'll sweep an election if it takes place today he has the street with him as no pakistani leader has had not even nawaz sharif at his peak when he could win very big majorities by himself his loyalists were also noisy and boisterous but but they would never take on the might of the army this lot is invading the homes of the core commanders or the ghq or or nawaz sharif if his supporters had been this this motivated he would not have been removed from power summarily and unfairly thrice Imran's popularity has risen to a level not seen in Pakistan before. It is because his rivals, enemies and critics including the army brass are so convinced that he will easily win an election that they aren't about to hold one right now or even given a choice on the due date in October unless they can disqualify him constitutionally or legally and prevent him from contesting. The answer to the second question however is even simpler. The second question to remind you was whether he'll be good for Pakistan if he gets elected or a disaster. So the answer is for sure if he wins a big mandate which he most likely will it will be a disaster for Pakistan because everything he stands for everything extreme populism angry retributive governance islamism anti westernism which is very important for Pakistan's perspective because they've survived all these decades 75 years on the at the largest of the western world so his anti westernism extreme views on india and impatience with modern economics will push pakistan further into the abyss which leaves us again with two further questions one can you stop him without denying pakistan democracy yet again and second if an election means the inevitability of imran in power with the majority can pakistan afford it it follows that if you are somebody sensible within that country particularly in its army's ghq general headquarters or even among its well wishers abroad you will also ask can pakistan afford at the helm an imran sanctified by a fresh election anybody who is still not convinced of the perils of democratization without preparation after the disaster that followed the heady arab spring should take a close look at pakistan right now Democracy is among the greatest virtues that human kind has evolved over this millennia a blessing with all its many imperfections but it cannot work in a vacuum of ideas institutions and a larger popular acceptance of what it entails to govern within a democratic but constitutional system 
A successful democracy calls for a deep set patience with its imperfections, as also with what is unique to a constitutional democracy. What is that? The limitations of majoritarian powers, for example. Nawaz Sharif lost power thrice because he failed to appreciate it, particularly, particularly the need for independence of his, of his judiciary. Imran Khan won't even make any effort to do so. That's why in a situation where Pakistan's institutions are weak or vaporizing, its judiciary for example, an elected Imran Khan made just with the fatal blow the hapless but powerful nation doesn't want. See it this way. Elections are the touchstone of democracy. But the one thing most of the so-called democratic and liberal forces in Pakistan do not want right now is an immediate election. So how do you, how do you resolve that contradiction? On this, they are on the same page, in fact, as the leadership of their army, which is the key point we need to debate this week. It is clear to all at this point that the ruling coalition, the so-called Pakistan Democratic Movement, PDM, led by, led by the Sharif families, Pakistan Muslim League, PMLN, Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz, and including the Bhutto Zardari clan-owned Pakistan People's Party, PPP, and others, including some key, key religious parties. This combination commands neither the credibility nor the power to govern a country of 23 crore plus with a broken economy and polity. You know what? To govern, a government must have that one quality, which is very difficult to translate in English, but in Urdu, it's called Iqbal. So if you don't have that Iqbal, you cannot rule a country, no matter what numbers your coalition has. If you don't have that one quality, that Iqbal, you cannot rule a country. You have no credibility to rule a country, which is the situation right now with PDM. Until the other day, Pakistan always had a parachute for such situations of grave crisis. That parachute, I regret to say, was the institution of its army. It's a far from perfect idea, especially for those of us, those like us, who must instinctively support democratization. But in Pakistan, the army provided stability. But all nations, especially the democracies, need institutions that can stand up to majoritarianism of any kind, including parliamentary majorities. In Pakistan, the judiciary, the election commission, the so-called anti-corruption watchdog, and the, and the ever so scandalous National Accountability Bureau, NAB, have all proven inadequate to the task of protecting its democracy or the national interest. The army was so far the only institution, the one institution that guaranteed stability. Like when you jump with a parachute, you knew if you pull this cord, parachute will open it and at least you will have a safe landing. Under this Imran onslaught, however, it isn't even a parody of its omnipotent past in Pakistan. That's the Pakistani army is not even a parody of its omnipotent past in the country. The country's biggest problem right now is that its army is at its weakest. Why should we care? You might ask in India, why should we care? Let the Pakistanis be hoist with their own petard. They sowed this wind, this awful army of theirs and the pain it has given us and so on. All of these are valid arguments. Schadenfreude Freud is always a tempting idea. Whether or not it is such a wise one when it comes to your second largest neighbor is a debate we can leave for another day. This week, we are talking about this counterintuitive and unfortunate idea of the perils of democracy. Perils of democracy in a country as large as Pakistan. Why and how did the Arab Spring fail? In one Arab country after another, once the headlines of the multiple Tehreed squares were over, elections followed. What was confused for a democratic upsurge was essentially a popular rebellion against decades of milita militaristic, populist, but near secular characters. So this was a popular rebellion. This was also an Islamically driven rebellion. Islam, the religion, was a very strong, very strong motivation behind it. Instinctively, therefore, the response was Islamic. Religion was then the fuel driving these protests. There was no surprise then when in one country after another, the Islamists won. It was invariably some version of the Muslim Brotherhood, except to some extent in Tunisia. It unraveled in each one. It began with Egypt, where the army returned and restored the status quo ante. And, and when it did that, it had a fair bit of popular support because the people of Egypt had not bargained for the kind of Islamization that their elected government had launched. Tunisia, long seen as one success story of the Arab Spring, has come apart now. Its ultra-popular common man leader, widely hailed in the Western world as a true democrat, has now morphed into a cynical dictator. 
how bad and dramatic that transformation has been i had spoken about in an episode of katta clutter i am sharing a link with you in the arab world democratization meant islamization so far the militarized dictatorships had kept the religion and the clergy in control if not under brutal suppression armed with the legitimacy of elections islamists now spread their influence this encouraged the new supporters of muslim brotherhood like turkey's erdogan who pushed his own mostly secular and modern and westernized democracy into rapid islamization and an elected dictatorship of course he became a dictator chastened by all of this pakistan's army would not want a mohammad morsi in imran khan as their new elected leader you cannot democratize on the run you need the patience of many decades of prolific work on the ground mass movements development of ideas and ideologies understanding and building of institutions and finally the maturity to accept the limitations of an elected majority in india for example we are not a perfect democracy not by any stretch of imagination there is no such thing as a perfect democracy nor is ours but much of this homework was done during the freedom movement the hard work of building a democratic culture and institutions and commitment to institutions that was done during the freedom movement subsequently there is a mass movement of some kind or the other each decade in some part of the country or the big history changing events like the emergency and the fight against it none of these arab countries had made this preparation that's why once they got democracy they didn't have leaders who would know what to do with it pakistan isn't quite so bad or inadequate on this count leaders successive generations of pakistanis have fought campaign for democracy they have built some bit of temper for democracy pakistan has also had its popular movements its protest movements it has developed a bunch of leaders but has much distance still to travel at a popular level it still has to acquire that patience you need in a democracy the patience to accept that even if i do not like the government even if i detest the government i have the government of the day i must wait till the next election to change it for that patience to develop and sustain however you need institutions that are credible and strong not ridiculous caricatures like pakistan supreme court has become the same court had disqualified and thrown out an elected prime minister with a healthy majority in nawaz sharif not because he was found guilty of corruption but because he was found not sadik which means one who's never told a lie find me a man like that or a woman like that one who's never told a lie and amin sadik and amin sadik one who's never told a lie and amin one who's never betrayed anyone and thereby because they did not find him sadik and amin they declared him unfit to rule when he was a prime minister with a full majority who will take the supreme court seriously they only did it because the establishment of the day or the army leadership of the day then in cahoots with imran khan wanted to remove nawaz sharif and ultimately hold a fixed election one way or the other and put imran back in power that court that judiciary has lost a great deal of credibility and now you've also seen these tapes these audio tapes which have come out conversations between the chief justices mother in law the wife of the top government lawyer we had an episode of cuttack letter on that couple of weeks back in fact i will share a link of that also with you check out the description especially now and that too who will trust this judiciary especially now when pakistan's democracy is so broken i don't know who in latins is team the original latins the man who built raisina hill and new delhi I don't know who in his team had the sense to put this inscription at the entrance of our north block and here is the inscription you can walk past the north block you can read it i think even if you google it you will find it and here is what the inscription says and i quote liberty will not descend to a people a people must raise themselves to liberty it is a blessing which must be earned before it can be enjoyed read that again how rude does it sound read that again for decades since i first noticed it i have nursed a secret fantasy to take the sand blaster to it and erase it there are moments though and this is one of those moments when i realize and when i think and why and when i reflect that the departing british however rude but telling us something something important this would be useful reading also for the well meaning people and institutions in pakistan as well today concluding on this note let me also use this opportunity to repeat my pitch that to earn those liberties to deserve those liberties and then to preserve those liberties you also need a free independent impartial unhyphenated press 
and that is only possible if people like you pay for it so please go ahead pay it doesn't cost very much it doesn't take much time take a paid subscription to the print